One important question is what will happen to the water when the species that makes up around 80% of the biomass is killed? Adelaide University is trying to find out. Researchers dumped six tonnes of dead virus-free carp into two and a half hectares of wetlands in South Australia's Riverland. The data from the field trial will be fed into a computer model to calculate the impact on other parts of the river system. While the results of this study are still being finalised, a big drop in oxygen was recorded in some parts of the wetland. That could be lethal to other fish that aren't being targeted if the carp aren't removed. Stillwater lakes are the focus of another study by Water New South Wales. It measured the impact of different quantities of dead fish at Prospect Reservoir, which supplies water to Sydney. In every case, there was a spike in nutrients, bacteria and algae, with the levels increasing as the number of dead carp went up. We did a couple of experiments. One of them was an actual odour test where you'd smell the water, and pretty much in all the treatments it was undrinkable. Significantly, oxygen levels also plummeted to zero in most tanks. Above 1,000 kilograms per hectare, the dissolved oxygen stayed uh, at zero for up to five days. And that's a real concern because for such a prolonged period at low ZO, you'll pretty much wipe out the rest of the ecosystem. The dead carp will have to be removed to protect native fish stocks. They wouldn't have long, they wouldn't be able to survive a, a, a scenario where there's no oxygen for a day, that's for sure. Joe Perris says his findings don't apply to all of Australia's waterways and that the figures would have to be diluted for deeper and faster flowing areas. The results are a good indication of what might happen in the northern part of the Murray-Darling system, where rivers are more stagnant and contract to waterholes during droughts. They're the only places that native fish and carp, in fact, can survive during those dry times. And without them, there is no habitat, so there's no fish. And if you suddenly have a huge mass of dead material from dead carp, the bacteria will bloom, they will use up all that oxygen, there'll be none left, it'll be called anoxic, and that will kill most fish. So the native fish, as well as the carp, will in fact be dead. Brisbane-based ecologist Jonathan Marshall is a member of the National Carp Control Plan Science Advisory Group. He also co-authored a letter published in the Science magazine which raises concerns about the release of the virus. I think the worst case scenario is that the intention of the National Carp Plan to improve native biodiversity could have the opposite effect and actually cause loss of native biodiversity. We're talking about a potentially one million tonne all at once in this area, in like the low lock one. It's going to be everywhere. You've got tourism in the river. Well, you won't have after that. It's the drinking water of Adelaide. Well, it won't be after that. If the biological control is released, the cleanup of hundreds of thousands of tonnes of dead carp will be a big challenge. Professional and recreational fishers are being approached to help out. Commercial carp catcher Peter Ingram believes removing the dead fish in some places, like where he fishes in the Gippsland area, will be a logistical nightmare. The carp aren't going to float down the middle of the river. That's just not how it works. Uh, a lot of them will go in under all this vegetation here and under these snags and die. And, um... Jonathan Marshall Probably says reaching the dead fish quickly will also be tricky in Queensland's part of the Murray-Darling, after comparing the river and road networks. 40% overall of these persistent waterholes are more than half a kilometre from the nearest um, road or track, meaning that accessibility is very limited. It would be very uh, technically difficult to get to these sites to do any physical clean-up of dead cars. There's lots of good work being done and I, would, I wouldn't like to be seen to be criticising any of it because it's all good, but I think the problem is there's a lot of questions and some of them just can't be answered quickly 
um, and the time frame for answering those questions is quite short. So uh, I think it's all being a little bit rushed. It's just illogical to say, oh, we're going to control it. You can't control it. Once it's in, it's in. And it's in forever.